Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I am Nick. It feels like I've been away for a long time, but it's only been a couple of weeks. Um, in that time, I've had a baby. He's not in my belly anymore, he's here. Well, actually, he's just having his nappy changed and then he will be literally here. Um, yeah, welcome. Make sure you are subscribed, turn the notification bell on. Um, come over and follow me on Instagram at goodlucknick as well. Today, I'm gonna be telling you my birth story. I am gonna sit with Mark and we're gonna talk through everything and we're gonna try and make it remember it as positively as possible i was induced because of not complications but they were slightly worried about his um if you watched my last vlog they were concerned about his weight dropping off on his growth scans and um we had an issue with the cord but the second scan the cord had kind of resolved itself the consultant was still adamant that induction would have been the best option because it was over 37 weeks so yeah induction i had an induction and i had a baby so we're going to talk through all of that obviously i might remember things slightly differently to the way mark remembers them um we're gonna we did film bits of like on the over that time as well so i'm going to add those clips in as we go along as to how we were feeling and stuff so yeah welcome to my birth story everyone welcome this is this is Jax. welcome to youtube Jax. are you happy about being here i want to go oh bored oh, already tired. bored already <laughs> So he was born on the 29th of March, um, 2021, and yeah, he's just a little baby, and I love him so much. Shall we talk about your birth story? Would you reckon? Would you like to relive that moment? He's breathing fastly. <laughs> right, I might feed him whilst we're doing it, so multitasking. It started with the induction, right, with being told we were due to be induced, which was on the Thursday. I'd gone in for the second scan, like to, for them to check the cord was working because as of the Tuesday, I'd been told I had a high PI. So they wanted to check it again, which was the Thursday. The cord PI was absolutely fine as of the Thursday, but they were still concerned regarding his growth as the charts that they follow, he was gaining weight but he wasn't growing as much as they would have liked yeah. essentially um so the consultant that i did see suggested a sweep which i had and i suppose that was the first part of the induction because that's a physical induction really isn't it um sweeps are pretty vigorous and not 100 percent comfortable so just a heads up if you ever have a sweep i have heard that they weren't comfortable before that anyway but they don't last very long and then he suggested about having an induction and he said it would be pretty soon he came back and said it would be starting the next day on the friday essentially uh, good morning i'm a bit overwhelmed today it is currently 24 minutes past 7 a.m on friday the 26th of march 2021 and I found out yesterday that we are being induced today. <laughs> um, I am 37 weeks and five days pregnant today. And this week we did find out that we were having, that there's some issue with the cord and the umbilical cord. Nothing overly concerning, but I think they have to consider um, induction when these issues arise. So, <clears throat> I saw a consultant yesterday, even though the cord had gone back down to normal um, because it had flared up the first time, like it was having to work overtime to get the baby what it needed. He thought that the best plan of action would be to um, 
send us for an induction. I found that out at like five, four, half four yesterday. And I've got to phone them at nine o'clock this morning to, to tell us a time to go in really. So I'm just repacking the hospital bag with more things because obviously, if you don't know, induction can take a little bit longer than a natural labor. And um, just because they've got to get you going artificially and it, it, essentially. Yeah, when you're watching this, I will have baby boy here and I cannot wait. I'm feeling a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. Um, mostly because of the unknown. I don't really know what's happening. Like, I do know what's happening, but not entirely. Do you know what I mean? Um, not long woke up, literally just sorting, sorting the bag out. Mark's cooking food. He's allowed to come with me because we're still in the middle of the pandemic. Thankfully, he's allowed to be with me. 10 till 10 which is better than a lot of hospitals as far as i'm aware um so yeah it's all go 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 today he's gonna be a march baby not an april baby potentially unless he's really stubborn in there but yeah chances are we could have him in the next couple of days exciting How are we going? Going, on going on holiday it's kind of what it feels like um so we're going to be induced. I'm absolutely exhausted. It's like 9 p.m. Friday, the 26th, 26th of March. We don't really know what's going on. We've been waiting for a bed all day. Um, so we're just heading in now. They've, well, I phoned them to chase them. Um, and they were kind of like, come in to triage and we'll get you monitored and then we'll send you around to delivery suite. I was like, well, is my husband allowed to come? And you know, all these things. Very unclear at the moment, but should be all good. Uh, just looking forward to finding out what's happening, feeling a bit nervous. Don't know that I've already said that. Um, but nothing major, just a bit of unknown apprehension, you know, how it is. Hope we can get in the door. Um, so yeah, this is it. The, the final war. We've got to get that way. Um, so this is it. Hey. Just being monitored in triage because because there's no beds. Yeah. For funsies. I think we're still a little bit unclear what's going on, aren't we? Yeah. A bit of mixed messages. She's going to find out. But we're not going home. That's the that's what we do now. Well, I'm not. Well, yeah, I'm potentially going home. Potentially. Potentially. It's just a waiting game. Mhm. Mm I'm uh, just leaving now. Um, it's just gone ten, and as per the hospital rules, I can't be there unless it's between the hours of ten a.m. and ten p.m. So we just just after ten got moved to the ward um, and then if anything happens in the night they're gonna phone me before they do anything so that's good to know so I can I feel like I can actually go and rest and not worry too much so they're not gonna actually make any moves until probably the morning um, so yeah it's probably we probably come up even though we were meant to come earlier we've probably come at a good time because the stuff that might take a while might happen overnight so that actually I probably won't miss anything or I'm pretty sure I won't miss anything so yeah Nick's on a ward now and yeah go from there hopefully I'll be back in the morning and things will uh, progress and he might be here tomorrow or it might be a few days <laughs> who knows but yeah it's uh, exciting So I ended up staying over Friday night and then being moved to the induction ward as of Saturday morning. You could come back 10 o'clock the next day, which is when it worked out perfectly for me starting the induction process the next morning. It was perfect timing. They give you a drug and they basically put it inside your cervix to help dilate you enough to break your waters. So it's morning, um, I'm, I'm back obviously, at the hospital. Um, 
nothing's really the only thing that's changed is nick is now in the delivery suite i have no idea how this is going to go or what's what the plan is but um it feels like it's going to happen uh being juiced today and then yeah we just go from there however long it takes i've bought homemade wraps wedges just food really people have been saying bring snacks and i'm like I want, to, I want to bring meals because <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be here. But yeah, normally in these kind of situations, not that I've been here before, but like similarly things going up to IVF, I would struggle with my anxiety really bad. There was times where I'd drive to the hospital, Birmingham Women's, and be like tapping myself to try and uh, to try and relieve it. But I think using the calm birth method, the breathing and stuff, it's, it's really helped me. And yeah, so I'm feeling feeling excited and positive. So yeah, it's good to, to be going in there um, in a strong mentality because I can be strong for, for Nick and, and make sure she's calm all the way through. All right, let's go in. How are you feeling? I'm one gel down. So induction started as a 10 o'clock this morning. So it's now Saturday, the 27th of March. Um, one gel in to try and soften the surface. Some more water as we need. Um, yeah, just bouncing and writing. I'm sure I'll be happy soon. Hello, Hello. afternoon. <laughs> um, we are nearly four hours into our six hours of the first gel, which is to soften the cervix. I did give you a little demonstration you this did. morning. <laughs> um, and the hope is that that's gonna put me into the first phase of labor, which I think I'm in, and soften the cervix enough so that we can, um, so that they can either break my waters or my waters will go without any assistance. Um, so we can be moved on to a delivery, delivery, what's it called? Delivery suite. 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 We're in the delivery suite. Oh, a delivery suite. So what's happening is that um, I feel like quite crampy and period painy. Um, I've tried to like be on the ball. I got told to like, hip circles and rock back and forth rather than bouncing so I've been doing a lot of that and we've just been walking up and down corridors um, trying to keep moving because it is quite intense in the back it is just like a intense period pain at the moment but it's really making me feel a lot of pressure um, making me feel like I need to wee making me feel like I need to poo I just sometimes I, I'm going and I can't wee at all um, so yeah it's all very interesting Things are kicking off, things are happening, which is good to know. Yeah, you're awesome. you're being great. Just keep rubbing my back and <laughs> doing whatever need they need you to do. But this is the easy bit. Yeah. It's well, gonna get harder. It's not the it's, I wouldn't say it's the easy bit, because it's the longest bit, potentially. You know what though, it's good to just like um, be consistently in it rather than it being like uh, thrown up on you straight away. So you're getting used to the feeling that way, aren't you? And yeah, definitely. So we're just kinda We've got to wait till four o'clock to be, I'll get like another sweep and they check it. So I have my hopes on the fact that enough has changed. I don't have to have another gel and wait another six hours. Um, because things, I think if we wait another six hours, I think things are going to get very intense. Because they're going to put a hormone drip in anyway when we move around. Which is the synthetic oxytocin that's going to put me into like full on labour. Um, which can make the surges and the contractions quite intense quite quickly but yeah that's where we're at you're doing good thank you
So I had the second gel. Um, that one was far more intense. Um, quite painful. Getting like, you do essentially get contractions um, and they just were relentless and they just didn't stop. For me, like this is, remember everybody, this is a very individual story. Um, I saw 12 other women leave before I left in a bay of four. So, you know, it is completely different per person. So if you are have been induced or if you um, feel you might get induced, don't let this worry you or scare you because this is my story. This was what happened to me and it might not go that way for you you know you could have one gel it'd be comfortable and you'd be totally fine to go forward So the second gel, yeah, I got a lot of, um, a lot more intense pain. We're leaking, we're leaking. Yeah, the, the next six hours were pretty rough. Um, and that was going to take us to the middle of the night, wasn't it? During the last half an hour, I think they must have seen the fact that the, the contractions were, uh, like, just they didn't, stop. normally it would be like, uh, down, but this was just like, and it just stayed up there and it was, yeah. you might have a little dip, but you just constant, constantly are in pain. Yeah, it was quite um, painful. It was actually quite a good way for me to see that because I could really like could understand, uh, understand it, put a number understand. to it, yeah. Um, where, you know, kind of your pain, why you're in pain almost. But then they said they wanted to give um, Nick a rest. Yeah, so then I, after the second gel, after I'd been monitored, they give us four hours. four hours off before and let my body calm down let jacks calm down and everything um before having the third gel that one again was more comfortable like the first one and they'd kind of told me that if this one didn't work they were going to use a mechanical more of a i say mechanical that's pretty pretty harsh um a physical dilator they're like rods and they go in like a tampon and they expand your cervix physically rather than it being a hormonal thing which is what the gels were so obviously the third gel again didn't didn't do anything my cervix didn't budge they sent me around to have the the rods put in again that wasn't an overly straightforward procedure for me um they said that my cervix um, my uterus looked a bit tilted they put a speculum in but they just because i've been messed with so many times and that had all the gels and everything was kind of blocking it and making it more difficult um the rods weren't very comfortable going in but once they were in i was absolutely fine and they would leave those in for 12 hours so we had a pretty because it wasn't hormonal it was much more comfortable for 12 hours so we we kind of just watched films we chilled out we had food for the 12 hours would lead us up to was it after I left? Or yeah, to one o'clock in the morning. Was it? Yeah, to that one o'clock in the morning. That was when the. That's when they were going to check you, weren't they? So I had to leave at ten. Well, like previously, uh, on the night, I, one of the nights I was able to stay. Luckily, wasn't meant to, but I was allowed to stay. What? Okay. Oh, they were like, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was allowed to stay. That was the night where just after you'd had the second gel and you were feeling you're having the four-hour break before the third gel. So that was good to be there for. I was sent home at 10 o'clock when there was three hours left of the rods being in. Yeah, we had like a, a quite a strong midwife at that point, didn't we? And she, yeah. she was a bit no-nonsense, which was fine. Like, you got to respect the rules, so. Yeah. I went home, then you called me at one. It is Sunday. I don't know what day it is. 28th, 28th. Uh, I'm leaving again. Uh, I managed to stay last night. We had a good midwife that let me stay and Nick was in a lot of pain last night with the second gel she's had a third gel today or through the night and then they've put five rods uh, in her to try and dilate her cervix more um, which wasn't really 
pleasant to, to watch. She was in a lot of pain, but she got through it. She did really well. So then they're going to examine her uh, one around one o'clock. They've said that they're not going to uh, do anything without me there. So that's good. So I'm going home now at 10 for probably a few hours and then hopefully I'll be called back to start the process. If they can't break her waters, then it's probably going to be a C-section. The problem is we keep getting mixed messages from different people because, I mean, you, know, you can't expect the same staff to be working 24-7, but when they do the handovers, you hear one person says one thing and then the other person just says, no, that that's not right. So you kind of can't let your mind set on like a route so you know there's there's some people that are saying um just break the waters and just see what happens and then the midwives so that's more the consultants and then the midwives are more like no you shouldn't do that um so eventually we'll make the best well nick will make the best decision uh for her and and jacks just said his name to be fair, this video is going out after he's born, so I'm sure you'll know it by then. Um, yeah, she'll make the, the best decision. So yeah, hopefully I'll be back in a few hours. It's been a bit of a whirlwind though. It feels like it's been about a day since I was here, but it's, it's just been about three hours. It's uh, just nearly about half past one on Monday morning, the 29th. Um, Nick's just called me to say that she's been moved to uh, a new room now we're gonna break up waters it's exciting so yeah it's just heading in now come on are we about to have a baby potentially uh i think let's wait until you get examined <laughs> never know well, i'm ready yeah. yeah i don't know how long the room just oh, you did i'm mine yeah okay it's now finally monday monday yeah, it's Monday. Monday the 29th of March um, and we might be, we might have a baby soon well in the next day today I mean it's half 1am so <laughs> who knows who knows got a beach view <laughs> All of my induction process, the rods, the three gels that I'd had all the time in between had took from Saturday morning all the way up until Monday, one o'clock in the morning, which is when I went round to the delivery suite. They took the rods out and I was dilated enough for them to break my waters. I was already on gas and air by that point. <laughs> they they uh, said that I could have that for when they were removing the rods because of how sore my cervix had been and for them to break my waters as well because it's not overly comfortable thing but with the gas and air it felt totally fine it was weird because it was when they broke the waters it was so it was that like really warm you know like when you wee <laughs> like it was it just felt like that it was so when weird when you wet yourself when you wet yourself well i kind of went more in the water you know like if you're in the in the sea or something you, <gasps> you wee in the sea <gasps> shocking oh jacks telling all our secrets aren't we they broke my waters and then they put me on the hormone drip so when you've been induced you get put on a hormone drip because you're naturally when you go into labor you produce oxytocin and this is synthetic oxytocin in a drip form so that was pretty intense that's when things really got intense for me because i've not had really any pain hormonal like pain pain since the second gel and once the um, hormone drip kicked in that's when things really started to ramp up you know that it's happening and there's nothing you can do there's no backing out so I was really excited but I was also very I was more nervous than I thought because of all the pain that I'd been through I say pain because of like being messed with so much I had started to build up this weird adrenaline thing that when I felt pain I would just shake which was really bizarre for me, wasn't it? Cause yeah, very weird I don't to see. Panic, or generally, I'm very, very calm and collected. But I found that when I was nervous, or that like when I knew something was gonna cause me pain, I would just uncontrollably shake, and it was bizarre. And 
I'm really thankful that I've been through my hypnobirthing um, because that was the thing that really helped me manage that and it helped you help me manage that. Yeah, it gave me something to try my best to help you with because yeah. otherwise I'd just be like, calm down, calm yeah. down, calm down. Um, it was but, practical advice like my breathing techniques and my breathing timings and stuff. Even doing those breathing timings whilst I'm gassing air, it all helped. I think you were thinking to your head went too far down the line. You were like, oh my God, this is, I've only been doing this 20 minutes, half an hour, and this could go on for hours. How, you know, you were saying to me, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And, and that's yeah. when you started to panic, I think. Um, and that's when the shake started to happen. Mm. Um, um, but you, you know, we, we tried to manage it the best we could. Um, I think the fact that you were like convinced of yourself that you wanted to just have gas and air, yeah. not have pain relief. Obviously we'd created a birth plan that was very calm and relaxing. You know, I'd had put all my candles out and my fairy lights out, I had my own pillow, my own blanket. Felt very relaxed. We had a playlist on. Um, I'll link the playlist that we use in the description box below if you ever want to check it out. And yeah, it was to get this wave of nerves and along with this intense feeling that the, the drip gives you it was so not what i'd expected i had uh they kind of talked to you about all the pain options beforehand anyway but on my birth plan i was like don't offer me pain relief if i want pain relief i will ask for it but one of my biggest rules i didn't want to feel forced into a decision that i wasn't happy with or didn't ask for myself but the discomfort was quite high for me the i think of the, the mixture of the discomfort and the gas and air for a prolonged period of time had made me sick yep. so i did throw up a couple of times as well and in the end i i say in the end about two and a half hours in i did ask for an epidural because i felt like i couldn't do it anymore and i felt before that i asked for that I to you, I didn't want to feel like I was giving up. Yeah. I felt like by having an epidural, at the time, I felt like having an epidural was me giving up and was I being weak by... It's not out. Was I being weak by having an epidural? That's how I felt beforehand. Um, and I've, I realised later that it's just not the case. If you take pain relief, if you need pain relief, take it. If you feel that's the right decision for you, that is that is literally what it's there for. And I needed it and it literally, I feel like it saved the labour for me. Um, how did you feel up until that point or what do you think? Obviously you go through um, the birth plan before and we did hypnobirthing as well and that's very much um, I think with hypnobirthing it kind of it, it does empower you it makes you feel like you can do it which is what you need you need to have that positive mental attitude yeah um, so we went in there thinking I think almost it was kind of as much as it was a positive it kind of fed that I'm not going to give up it and have pain relief you know, that, that narrative in your brain where it feels like giving up. That's the only thing I would say. I don't know. I think that's more me, though. I think I, yeah, 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 I yeah. made myself feel that way. Yeah, I, it's it's a tough one. But obviously it was um, it was hard to, to witness because you do feel a little bit helpless. I mean, there was a lot I could do, but I knew that you were just in... I've never... You know, I've seen you go through some things in our life, like a lot of pain. But I've never seen you in that much pain um, to the point where, you know, you were throwing up and stuff. So that that was tough. And when you took the epidural, I thought it was the right decision for you. Yeah, um, I agree. And I thought you made it with, um, you tried everything. You tried to go for as long as you could. And you got to the point where I just, you know, you, you kind of got to the point, it was just coming too much for you. Um, and then the epidural hit. And we were actually able to have an hour's sleep in labour. Yeah, um, which so, was amazing. You know, it's, it's complete it, it, night and day. Yeah. It was, like, beforehand, and I'm sure there's a bit a lot of you watching this that will think the thought of an epidural, the thought of a needle going into your spine is just really n horrendous. Like, and that's how I felt about it beforehand as well. I, I was like, oh, God, no, like, I really don't like the thought of that. 
Miss Matter? Do you not like hearing your birth story? Do you not like hearing your birth story? Yeah, you, you do think it's a bit of a scary thing, but honestly, I felt like I'd asked for it too late in hindsight. Like, even at the time, I remember thinking, I, I don't know how I'm going to wait for this to kick in. Like, yeah. how, how am I going to cope for the next 20 minutes or whatever? Um, while they're setting it up and, like, faffing around me, I'm like, I'm in pain. Um, but remember, this is not a normal labour. This is an induced labour. And even if you have an indu induced labour, it might not, A, take so long, and B, it might not, it might not affect you the way it affected me. So please remember this again is an individual journey. Um, and I don't want to scare anyone. I don't, I didn't want this to be a really scary thing because at the end of the day, I got the best thing ever out of it. And yes, it was painful and long, but looking back now, that doesn't matter. Um... And I, I did my best, you know, and that's the most important thing. So having the epidural for me was a lifesaver. That was the best thing I could have done for me in that situation. They monitored Jack's really closely. They monitored me really closely. And for the next 10 hours, for the next, before I started pushing, what, eight hours, I was comfortable. Yeah, yeah, relatively comfortable, and then um, you got to the end of the the gels, and then they said the gels, not the gels, the end of the hormone. The time. Um, and then they checked you, and that you were like ten, 10 centimeters. centimeters, and and yeah. through everything that we'd been through the past few days, that was the first time we were like, oh my god, like it's worked because yeah. it was the first lot of hormone drip, and you didn't need to have three, you didn't need to go on for ten days, so we yeah. were like, oh my god, this is great. And everything seemed like really chill. Like the music was up. playing. We were like, oh, we're going to meet him soon. This is yeah. exciting. Yeah. Like, it did feel you know, great. They, they mentioned um, first time mums. It's usually an hour and a half of pushing on average. And we were like, okay, okay hour and a half. And then the first few times you, you know, they were like, okay, so because uh, Nick had had the epidural, you can't quite, well, you probably should say this about the contraction. You can't. I mean, some people don't feel them at all. I was feeling them just in one area. And also I was getting like cramp in my bum every time I'd get a <laughs> contraction. Um, so once you have a contraction, you're supposed to push on the contraction because I think it helps. I don't know whether it's the tightening and the pushing at the same time helps him come round. They describe it as a U-bend. So he has to like come down and round. But every time you stop pushing, he kind of goes back. Um, and that's why you have to keep, keep pushing, keep pushing. Um, but you could see it on the, um, on the graph that we were saying about before, you could see when I was having contractions and stuff. So I'd started pushing, like Mark said, for an hour and a half or for however long. But it was, I was going to say your first few, it was like, um, it, good. it was like watching you, uh, do Work weights out. in the gym. Yeah. Like you were, you were kind of like, you know, they'd, they'd say like do three, um, pushes per contraction. So they'd say like big breath in. And then just push and hold. Push and hold. It's like not a like big, not ab, like out. a big. You know, as if you're gonna like you brace yourself. Say if you were gonna be punched in the stomach and you kind of go. <gasps> yeah. It's like that. It's not. And they, gonna they be... were saying like you were doing really well because um, well, in, we'll say that about that in a bit. But you know, his um, his little thing on his head. Um. Anyway, they said you were doing really well. Um, and I was like, oh, yes, you like this is like part of the labour where you're coming into your own. This is like yeah, where your strengths are would, yeah. kicking in. And um and it was it was amazing. I felt really empowered at that point. And then I think about half an hour in, maybe less, it it got to the point where you were like, the epidural isn't enough anymore. Like this is real severe. It got quite yeah. It got to a point where, it was like the leg pain, the cramp, like my hip, my leg, my bum, was hurting so much. Um, because that was the only place I could feel anything. <laughs> that I needed to take the gas on again. So I was on the epidural and the gas in there at the same time. Um, they were monitoring us both, but his heart rate kept dropping off the belly monitor. So they talked about putting an electrode monitor thing on his head from like in the cervix to keep a closer eye on him. Did they do that in the end? Yeah, so they tried to at first and it didn't work, but because he came back on the um, on the belly monitor, 
so they didn't they didn't want to do that and then again again he dropped off so they they did it again and they managed to get it attached and get a heartbeat from his head which is just mental um and actually for like from my point of view and obviously their point of view it was a really good way of seeing how, how you were doing is. because you would when you were you know coming around that u-bend you would see the stick that it was on come further out and then when the contraction stops you'd see it go back in but you'd see that this that it was coming further and further out so you were progressing but when you're giving your all every minute for you know for three pushes and not feeling like getting any rest and it's that for two hours which is what it was he went on for two hours um it felt like a lifetime because See, it went so fast for me oh it felt like a lifetime for me because there was so many different stages so obviously when we first went in, uh, into that phase of pushing the midwife was like Ideally, it'll just be us three in the room. Um, won't need anyone else in here if it's all straightforward. And, and in your head, you just go, great, it's going to yeah. be just us three. That's the way it's going to go. Um, and then slowly, another midwife would come in and just monitor the, um, the, the the machine and see how you were doing. And then then they called Ben in. <laughs> ben the doctor, Ben the consultant. He was great. He was, you know, encouraging me to push. Um, and saying, I'm on hand here if you need assistance, um, like an assisted birth. And he kept sticking his head in like every 15 minutes, didn't he? Yeah, so they needed to kind of make a plan in case anything needed to happen um, because they only let you push for so long before intervening. Well, I was watching the uh, the, the monitor as well, just because it's, it's something else to do whilst trying to look after you. Um, and that you could see that towards the end when you pushed he was heart rate was like 150 160 and when you pushed it would sometimes drop down to 80 like it would just like dramatically drop because he would just really not like it towards the end he was getting yeah. stressed out and i think that was the biggest issue why they don't let you push for much longer is because of the risk to him yeah um so then they just gave us a couple of options of what might happen didn't they I can't remember. So, um, <laughs> hey, I suppose you wouldn't by that point. Um, he said that regardless of what's going to happen, he said, you're either, if you push this out, this, <laughs> if you push him out naturally, you're going to tear. He said that. Or, he did. Yeah, or if it's assisted, uh, we'll do an episiotomy. Which is where they cut your perineum to kind of create space to get the forceps or the vontus in to get the baby out. And he uh, gave us like both options, but he said what he'll do is he'll do an examination first to see if the Fontus would, would fit and that'd be possible. Because um, the thing they were saying, if, if he's close enough, the Fontus would be better, would Yeah, they that's say? The, the lesser the, of two It's like evils. the suction thing on the head where they kind of and pull him out. Um, like but he said out. that he, did, he wanted to be certain that he could do that because the last thing they want to do is do that, fail, and then have to use forceps as well. I don't think they would have done that. Did he, was it von Tu's C-section? Or was it no, von no. forceps C-section? Oh, they might, they might have, yeah. But he, he wanted to make sure that you avoid the C-section part. He wanted to make sure that if he goes ahead with the von Tu's, he can get him out. So he decided that it was going to be forceps. So after two hours of pushing, 10 hours of labour before that, two days of induction before that, day of waiting before that, we were having a forceps delivery. That required the episiotomy, which was pretty painful. They did local anaesthetic on it, but I was really happy that I'd already had the epidural, which really numbed everything. Another thing to note about the epidural is they have to empty your bladder for you. So they just cathet put a catheter in you every couple of hours. Because you're on the drip, you do have a lot of fluid going in. So they have to like drain your bladder every few hours. Also not allowed to eat. Not allowed to eat, not allowed to have anything. So it'd been a long, since one o'clock in the morning, he ended up being born at one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so that was 12 hours without any food. Well, even before that really, because it was the middle of the night, you haven't had anything since tea time really. Yeah. Um, so it was quite a long day. So back to the delivery. Four sets, they did the local anaesthetic to do the cut, which at the time couldn't feel anything. Um, you know, it was a bit, it was stingy because of the local, but otherwise it didn't feel anything. Um, that felt like it took quite a long time, like the prep stuff, did it? 
Um, yeah, I guess so because we're not. When I think about the the, the label, we say twelve hours, but really we got in the room at one o'clock, didn't we? And then loads of stuff had to happen before that, and the drip was only on for six hours, and then you were pushing for two, so that's eight hours. So there's four hours of in between stuff. So the in between the drip and the pushing, and then after the two hour window. No, because they they had to. We had to wait an hour and a half before I started pushing between the drip finishing and starting pushing, remember? Oh, you have to wait an hour and a half? Remember, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So th there was time. There, there was, was time lots... in between. Um, I don't know. It, it, it... But even after I was born, I felt like there was a lot going on afterwards. Yeah. For a long period of time. So we messed with. Yes, yeah, you were, definitely. Um, but we were just focusing on him and you at that point. But going back a little bit. Yeah, um, let's get back to the birth. He, um, yeah, so obviously he, he'd done the episiotomy then. Um, obviously you were with the gas and air still. Um, and then I think he was asking you to push still, well. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it was intense, that was. The forceps, like, I imagine that's what it would have felt like giving birth naturally because you do feel it. You do feel him come round. I still felt him. Yeah, yeah. Even with the forceps. Um, that, for me, that part is a blur. So, like, there's so much of the labour, the induction, which were there for days and days, I remember vividly. But the part where they're uh, doing the forceps on you, I was so concerned. I think I was scared. I was so concerned about you and him that I... It was just a blur, especially... When they, when he put him on you. Yeah. Well, during the pushing part, you were kind of like, you had like a wet flannel for my head, and you kept giving me my water yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I said, uh, I said I was like a like a ring guy in the corner for a boxer, so I'd be like, I'd flip open your water bottle and give you that, and then I'd be dabbing your head down, and then I was massaging your um your hip when that was really hurting. Yeah, so I was leg. doing that for quite a lot of the the pushing phase. Yeah. Um. We've got me and the midwife, where were we? One leg each. Yeah, so we were just trying to give you as much relief as possible. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, scaling back as well, when he offered the um, the Von Twos and the forceps, I made a really stupid <laughs> statement. I said, is it, because they talk about like um, like the baby's head's like being a bit like a cone head um, or like big bruising. And I just said, um, if it is um, the Von Twos, is it permanent? <laughs> and he turned around to me in the middle of everything and he was like how many people do you know walking around with cone heads i was like oh yeah damn <laughs> that was a stupid comment um but you're just so scared at that point like yeah. you don't want it because you because you, you you hadn't eaten either so you were kind of <laughs> yeah that was my excuse i was, I was uh, it does become like a weird blur like but yeah. you you um you're so concerned like you, you're told to ask questions especially with hitler and they're like you know Ask questions. Be empowered. Be ask empowered. It. Yeah. yeah, use your brain. Um, so I was like worried because you've got to make decisions. Or I suppose to be fair, some of the decisions were out of our control anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that everything's okay and he's going to be okay and that a decision you make might not doesn't affect him long term, and even short term, like it's not even affecting him at all, is it? Um, but yeah, after that, he was. He, he was, was out he was and out. On, my, on my chest and I didn't know whether I'd cry or not and I did. Um, oh, I knew you'd cry. <laughs> go on, 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 go on. Beautiful. And then stop. Don't push. Well done. Ah! Quickly, you check out the snow. Don't push. Okay. <laughs> Don't push.
everything we'd been through to just get there not even like thinking even if about you the pregnancy about the IVF. and IVF it like, was just like the labour was just it's so intense um and just to have him there was just such a relief um and knowing that he was okay yeah he was he definitely a boy is he okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah he um he, he was he was good i mean his head was because um all the messing you'd had around at your cervix head that's where his head was like his head was almost like double the size of the back wasn't it yeah. and then obviously he had his bruised cheeks um but he was he was happy and he had he, he had that he doesn't do it as often now but he had the little oh, 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 like his, <laughs> his quivering lip like the way he cries it was just like oh god it was so cute so while he was on my chest, they were kind of just stitching me up and cleaning the room around us and stuff. We had the, the third stage, didn't you? Oh yeah, they did the... Um, so I wanted a natural placenta delivery. The alternative is they give you an injection and then kind of pull on the cord and pull it out. Apparently all that happened. I ended up with an injection and then pulling the placenta out and I remember none of it. Didn't feel any of it. Um, and, and again, with the stitching and stuff, they, they were stitching me up, didn't you they? You felt... Uh, I think like, that was quite uncomfortable. There was a few things, times you were like, oh, because uh, you had him on your heart. I so was you were holding, holding him, him and I was holding the gas and air. Yeah, Mark was still giving me the gas and air at that point and I still had the epidural in and stuff. Um, so that was pretty painful. Like, I say painful, that was like, quite uncomfortable. And I think because you'd been messed with for so long and pushing and stuff, it kind of made things more sensitive anyway, you know, than if you had only been in a two-hour labour or whatever. But yeah, it was... It wasn't the water birth and calm experience I was expecting, but the result, the outcome was the same. And at the end of the day, that is all that matters and that he was here safely and that I was safe. And yeah, he's just literally been the best thing ever, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been incredible. I think um, it's easy for me to say this because I'm not a doctor, but in hindsight, I don't think you needed to be induced personally no but we as always were trying to do what was what we were told was best for him but the fact that you had like a slightly different opinion from somebody else who was like mm, i don't know if his service is ready which in reality if you think wasn't. about the induction process what you had to go through it wasn't but it was to just protect him yeah um, I don't regret, personally, obviously from my side of things it's easy to say, but I don't because we've got an extra two weeks with him that we wouldn't have had yeah. otherwise. So he was 38 weeks and From a day, day when he was born. Um, and he weighed 7 too, so he was he was perfect. Um, it took him two weeks to get back up to his birth weight, but we're there now. And yeah, literally the last nearly three weeks now has been amazing my recovery has got better and better every day it took me ages to have a wee after birth um i had to stay in hospital for one night after and the bleeding was pretty heavy after as well but yeah it's it's all been amazing and i wanted to share my birth story with you even though it wasn't the most straightforward nor comfortable thing i think it's important that we share these experiences I think, would I have preferred to know someone's induction story beforehand? I'm going to go so ahead and say, no, you wouldn't. No. But but what I would say... But I was already in it. But what I would say is that um, you've, you're you going to have an amazing, hopefully amazing staff there. Yeah. They were we, brilliant. We did have incredible, incredible staff. And I'm so grateful for the NHS and the midwives and doctors that we had around us were perfect all all weekend that we were there and and if you were to like think about it the hardest part was probably the first part of labor where you you didn't have the epidural so for anyone watching you can eradicate that if you did want to do that that bit can be skipped um the induction process whilst frustrating and painful it, that was individual it was individual and also bearable 
It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. I was the, only on paracetamol that entire time. It wasn't the unbearable that you had in labour. So when we're talking about it as a neg, you know, the, the obviously it was just it was just. A lot, wasn't it? Yeah. And some people have even longer and more difficult. Uh, I think because we were tired and, and probably not fueled properly. Um, it was just one of those things. It's different for everybody. I now look up back at it with more fondness than I did a week ago. Yeah, I think it's and wise that we're doing this now rather than when yeah, we were this, first. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to hate on it because it was. It's what brought us our son. It's what brought Jacks to us. Yeah. Um. It was the last part of our journey. And I like when people were asking me at the beginning, you gonna have another one? And I'd literally just walked out of hospital. I was like, I really don't, I really don't know actually, because I'm in a lot of pain still. <laughs> um, I struggled to sit down on a hard surface for a good week and a half. Um, but I've been very comfortable and my recovery has been relatively smooth. I've not suffered any adverse side effects from the epidural. I've not suffered any adverse effects from the episiotomy. My stitches have healed really well. I've felt really well in myself. We're coping with the lack of sleep. We're adjusting really well to family life, which we will talk about in another video, but it's, it's all just been amazing. Apart from the fact that it was slightly uncomfortable for a short period of time, but it was a short period of time in the grand scheme of things and that's how you kind of have to look at it. It was out of the rest of our lives together, it was half a day, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, it was empowering because I grew him and I got him out, yes, with a bit of help, but he, he was here safely and that's all that matters. Yeah, and he, we, I think we felt very lucky, like post birth, that he was healthy, yeah. um, and that you know there was uh, you know all the checks and everything. He was he was great, and as much as you can curse your luck, going through everything you had to go through in the du induction process, you take that any day, meaning that he is safe, you know, and he's got no issues or no, no medical concerns, um, which you know some babies do have and yeah i feel very lucky that um that he's he's, okay. he's doing really well yeah i agree <sighs> time for a nap mm. right we're gonna leave it there thank you so much for listening to our birth story if you made it to the end thank you um going forward there's going to be more family vlogs there's going to be more parenting vlogs uh more of just us three in general so please stick around, make sure you are subscribed, um, notification bell turned on for the next videos. Thank you for being here and we will see you on the next one.